trucks are awesome. They're infinitely customizable. From street rods to canyon carvers, mountain roads, desert dunes, or just plain old mud bogs. With a pickup truck, the sky's the limit. Literally. And whether you're into dragging around speedboats, towing your race car, or helping your friends move a few slices of pizza, a truck is the ideal weapon of choice. Here's the thing, not all trucks are created equal. So today on Idealist, we've got eight trucks in no particular order that you'd have to be a complete idiot to buy. Let's go. <laughs> Nissan Titan Cummins 5 liter V8. Nissan had its eyes on taking a bigger slice out of the full-size truck market when it rolled out the Titan, and it seemed like they were making all the right moves. I mean, the Titan wasn't half bad, and the decision to collaborate with Cummins for a diesel engine was brilliant. After all, Cummins engines are the creme de la creme, aren't they? Well, usually. But this particular one, let's just say it didn't quite live up to the hype. Turbocharger troubles, DPF and DEF malfunctions, high pressure fuel pump fiascos, the Titans had it all. And let's not forget the truck's incessant attempts at forced regeneration, which not only stole power, but drank up fuel like a thirsty race car on the final lap. Overall, the reliability was a disaster. So much so that Nissan ended up practically rolling out the red carpet for unhappy owners, buying back heaps of these pickup trucks to try and save face. And personally, here at Ideal, we put one of these Titans to work for a little over a year. And let's just say it wasn't exactly a shining star. Even now, Nissan hasn't quite managed to iron out several customer complaints, leaving Titan owners somewhat stranded. Now, a friend of our at Cummins told us unofficially that while the 90 degree 5 liter V8 isn't exactly a lemon, it's the only engine in their lineup that they personally steer clear from. Take that for what it's worth. Oh, and by the way, Nissan finally threw in the towel with the Titan. Maybe it's a mercy killing or perhaps a graceful bow out of a challenging game. Either way, the Titans era has come to an end. And if you're enjoying this vid so far, slap the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Ford F-150 5.4 Triton V8. Yeah, we all know Ford's Triton series of the best-selling F-series trucks are a total mess. Honestly, if it weren't for Ford's solid brand loyalty and their unbeatable corporate fleet terms, these F-150s might not have tanked the company, but they surely could have nudged Ford off the top spot for America's best-selling pickup. It's actually amazing how they held on to that title with these trucks. These engines are prone to sludging up, breaking exhaust manifold studs at will, and don't even get me started on the spark plug issue. The 5.4 liter V8 that over the years was available with single or double overhead cam configurations produced anywhere from 195 to over 550 horsepower when supercharged in the absolutely ideal Ford GT. Although the engines in the Mustang and the GT are not the same as the truck version. Of the two, the three valve is whoops. Oil sludging is notorious, particularly when following the manufacturer's oil change guidelines like you're supposed to, this leads to oil passages plugging up, causing extensive damage like failing camshaft phasers and worn out timing chains. Once plugged, a full rebuild isn't even viable. You're pretty much stuck with full engine replacement, which doesn't fix the original design flaw, meaning the new engine could suffer the same fate. As for the spark plugs, early designs led them to literally blow out of the engine. Ford's fix was a two-piece design that actually made things worse causing the plugs to seize and snap. It became such a headache that mobile mechanics started entire businesses solely to extract spark plugs. And despite all the headaches, the F-150 is still as popular as ever. And luckily, the trucks that came after it are much improved. Talk about loyalty. Ram 1500 Eco Diesel 3 liter V6. Believe it or not, the Ram is a truck that has had sort of a turbulent history. I mean, until recently, it's always trailed in sales when compared to the rivals from GM and Ford, and a big part of that comes down to the R word. Yes, reliability. But no Ram ever built compares to the ones with the 3 liter Eco Diesel, because when Chrysler wanted to plop a diesel into their 1500, they skipped their usual partner, Cummins, and teamed up with VM Motory. Now, Motory was busy crafting a 3 liter V6 for GM on a European Cadillac project when GM went bankrupt. Fiat swooped in to supposedly save the day, bought the design for a steal, and spoiler alert, it wasn't the best buy. 
The second generation, now a Fiat collab, made its debut in Rams and Jeeps in 2014. And get this, it became instantly famous, like your boy, winning awards for quality, satisfaction, and fuel economy, even landing on Ward's 10 best engine lists. Then things started to go south. It's been plagued with issues like oil cooler failure, EGR cooler leaks, cam gear slippage, timing chain failures, and let's not overlook the contaminated engine blocks leading to complete engine failure at surprisingly low mileage. One of those bad luck cases, yeah, it happened to a good buddy of ours. The engine failed, Chrysler replaced it, and guess what? The new one is leaking coolant into the oiling circuit. And then there's the emission scandal that was fixed with a software update, which really only succeeded in slashing fuel mileage, dampening performance, and making the throttle act like it was on a permanent coffee break. So, yeah, not great. And this one's a tough one because there's a lot of upsides to owning one of these, including fuel mileage. But if I were spending my mom's credit card, I'd save a bit more and go for a truck from the third gen. While they're not perfect, so far they seem much better. Ford F-Series 6 and 6.4 liter Power Stroke V8. Okay, I gotta level with you guys because this one takes the cake for the worst trucks to own on my list. You ask why? Well, that's because the 2003 to 2010 Ford Super Duty diesels are like a recurring bad dream. Now, in defense to these trucks, you bought one fresh off the lot, treated it like royalty, never so much as looked at a tuning kit, followed this service schedule like a devout disciple, and maybe, just maybe, you might experience a passable grade. But let's be real, these are big brawny full-size pickups made to be put to the test, except it turns out that this one flunked the work hard test. Listen up. I know there'll be some diesel enthusiasts out there ready to shout about how amazing these engines are once they're bulletproofed. But here's the cold hard truth. No engine that demands that many repairs, mods, and upgrades to merely be reliable deserves your precious time or money. And the 6.4? Forget about it. It's straight up junk. Both engines have a whole host of major problems. The head gaskets bomb out because the head studs stretch and snap. The fuel injector control module fails spectacularly, partly because Ford decided the side of the valve cover was a great mounting spot, because who doesn't love exposing sensitive electronics to wild temperature changes and severe vibrations? The result? You could be left with a non-starting or rough-running mess thanks to the faulty glow plug control. Oh, and speaking of glow plugs, they fail too, by the way. The engine oil cooler breaks down, letting coolant crash the oil party. The EGR cooler calls it quits, letting exhaust mix with coolant, and before you know it, you're dealing with symptoms of a failed head gasket, which might actually be failing too. The injectors? Fail. High pressure oil pump? Fail. Turbocharger? Big expensive fail. And to top it all off, nothing's cheap or easy to replace on these engines. They're downright disasters. I mean, it's a good thing that Ford learned their lesson with its replacement, the 6.7. Yikes. Right. <sighs> Chevrolet Colorado GMC Canyon 3.5 in line 5. When the General sharpened their pencils and got to work on a replacement with a much-loved S10, the design team hit it out of the park. The engineers, though... Not so much. These trucks literally fall apart. If you ever wanted to see what it looks like when the accountant runs a car company, well, this is it. These trucks grapple with misfires that aren't easily fixed with new spark plugs or ignition coils. Instead, you might be dealing with failing fuel injectors or worn out valve seats. Got that valve seat problem? You're in for a complete cylinder head replacement. A massive undertaking with a timing chain engine. Maybe a happy coincidence then, seeing as the cam phasers and timing chains probably need replacing anyway. This issue mainly plagues the earlier L52 engine, but don't cheer just yet, they revamped the engine into the LLR model, boasting more power and alleged improvements. Still, the results have been hit or miss, with persisting problems in timing, oiling, and various electrical quirks. And personally, it's one I'd probably just avoid. Go for the later Colorado with the V6 instead. They're just better. We can't talk mid-size pickups without the next one, though. Dodge Jeep 4.7 V8. Yeah, the 4.7 liter V8s that Dodge stuffed into literally everything from Jeeps to Dakotas and Durangos to even the Ram 1500 wasn't necessarily terrible. Okay, I will admit it wasn't a good fit for the 1500, 
but it makes this list because you don't have to search very hard to find some horror stories. That being said, the Dakota itself is probably my ideal pick. If you needed a small to mid-sized pickup that doesn't break the bank, you could find a clean Ford Ranger. In our experience though, the 4.7 wasn't so bad, but according to the interwebs, it did have its share of problems. These engines have their fair share of issues. Valve seats drop off, causing internal damage and misfires, rocker arms can fall off for seemingly no reason, lifters get noisy, and inadequately sized oil passages lead to sludge problems without an easy fix. Pair it with a 1500 Ram at the time and you'll find it underpowered, fuel hungry, and lacking in tow capacity. But hey, personal experience counts, right? And we had a Dakota for six years, and it was super reliable, even at 184,000 miles. Sure, it had a few noisy lifters and required some basic maintenance, including a failed water pump, but it wasn't a disaster. I might even say I missed that truck. Ram 1500, 2500, 5.7 liter Hemi. Okay, okay, real quick, we had to include the Ram trucks with the 5.7 liter Hemi. The trucks themselves, yeah, they're pretty solid, but the early Hemi V8s had a couple of problems mainly with exhaust manifolds leaking and occasionally the cylinder deactivation system. The exhaust leaks, well, they become aimworthy. But other problems reported with one of these are actually few and far between, unlike our next pick, Chevrolet Silverado 5.3 and 6.2 with VVL. Legends. GM Silverado and Sierra are legendary pickups, and from the late 60s clear up on to the early 2000s, there's no other truck that I'd personally buy. But, and there's a but for every seat, when they're equipped with that V8 engine with cylinder deactivation, well, they've got some issues, boys. Overall, the trucks are okay, but that cylinder deactivation system is riddled with costly problems. The control valves fail, the lifters themselves fail, and they're known to break push rods. Normally, not a huge problem with a push rod engine, since typically you just remove the valve cover and rocker arm and you're there, right? Not with these. The lifters and push rods are not serviceable without removing the cylinder head. It's not completely the end of the world or anything, but it will set you back several thousand dollars to fix. The trucks themselves have some issues, but so do the trucks from every other manufacturer. And now it's time for an honorable mention. Toyota Tacoma 3 and 3.4 liter V6. Yes, it's honorable mention time, and this one, it's gonna leave some folks triggered. Because while these trucks have literally built their reputation on lasting forever, as long as you keep them from rusting away, their engines, well, they're not our favorite. We're talking about the 3 and 3.4 liter V6 found in the 80s and 90s Toyota trucks. Okay, so as I've stated in videos in the past, this engine really isn't all that bad when it comes to reliability. It has two relatively major problems, but for a lot of people, the issues never reveal themselves before the whole truck rots away after several hundred thousand miles. They can blow head gaskets, and they can burn up exhaust valves. But by far and away, the biggest problem with these comes down to the way they drive. In my opinion, neither makes enough low-end torque, and since it really doesn't like to rev, what horsepower it's got isn't readily accessible. These engines don't sound particularly good, nor do they get particularly great mileage. Lastly, I can't stand working on them. I refuse to do another V6 toy with a head gasket, but that's all just my opinion. Millions of people all over the world love these things, and if you're one of them, well, more power to you. It's just not personally for me. Yeah, these aren't my cup of tea either. I'm a coffee guy, but we have to give huge respect for the Toyota enthusiasts out there. And of all the trucks in the world, it's the new Tacoma we're most excited about. So absolutely no hate. If you're into old Toyota pickups, well, you do you. So do you own one of these trucks on your list or does your worst enemy? Let us know down below your ownership experience. We'd love to hear from you. Also, remember to slap that like button and subscribe if you're new and turn on that notification bell and check out this ideal vid up here or whatever YouTube recommends you watch next. I'm Brad, that's Trav, and promise me one thing, keep living the ideal lifestyle.